South Carolina Governor School for Science and Mathematics is engaged in master planning, thinking about the buildings and grounds it will need as it grows into the future. So we took a trip to the Greenville offices of Macmillan, Paz, and Smith, an architecture firm that specializes in, among other things, K-12 architecture. There, I met with architect and GSSM alum, Alex Lay. We discussed trends in STEM school design, Alex's career experiences, and his advice to young students interested in pursuing a career in architecture. Alex, thank you for spending your time with us today. Now, we are here at the Greenville office of Macmillan, Paston Smith. Tell us a little bit about the firm. So Macmillan, Paz and Smith is an architecture firm located, our headquarters are here in Greenville, but we have offices uh, located across South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia. And uh, it's an architecture firm that specializes in a variety of, uh, we call them studios, project types, including uh, K-12, healthcare, higher education, and um, various community projects as well. So focus in a bit on the K-12 type projects. So what do you do in that area? K-12, we work with a variety of districts across the state, um, anything from elementary schools, middle schools, uh, we do high schools, we do private schools as well, um, school renovations, ground up uh, new facilities, facility studies, basically anything that um, is associated with the production or um, development and renovation of any sort of school building. Okay, so the podcast is about STEM education. So when it comes to the architecture of schools in K-12, what about the STEM elements? So what are you seeing there, maybe in terms of laboratories and, and other aspects? Lab, uh, laboratories, um, we're seeing a lot of programs involving robotics. Um, some schools even have computer-aided drafting, 3D printing, maker spaces, um, a lot of those things. Uh, information is so much more easily obtained these days, especially through media like YouTube and, and, and various uh, uh, video websites. And so um, the exposure to what's out there is so much more prevalent among the younger children now. And so they want to they have the ability to do these things. Um, we're seeing them um, incorporated in, in uh, schools from all sorts of school districts. Now you mentioned the governor school and also careers and, and moving into those. So you're an alum of the, the yep. governor school. So tell us about your path from high school to becoming an architect. So I uh, didn't, like most people, I really didn't know what I wanted to do in high school. I was, um, I was adept at art and interested in um, problem solving, a little bit of math. Um, I happened to live in Hartsville and so I was aware of the governor's school and, and felt that was a natural progression so I applied and got in and um, really did not still understand what I wanted to do moving forward and, and um, I, I think it's getting better with with modern students I think they again they have more exposure to different types of professions through video and blogs and um, podcasts and things like that but back then you know, it was, you kind of had to wait and figure it out. And so, um, you know, I would, I'd say I was probably like an average student, kind of middle of the road. I, I, I got my first C ever when I was in governor's school, and that was a shock. But um, I, I made it through it, and um, I remember distinctly, you know, I was taking the PSAT, and on that second page, there's a, there's a section with all the, what do you want your college major to be? And I was about to bubble art, and I had a slight moment of clarity. And right above the word art was architecture. And I, I, I knew it, was, it sounded better. Um, could probably make a little more money at it. Um, I think it had something to do with building. So I'd, yeah, I'll do that. Um, I still kind of had no idea what it involved. But um, I, I kind of I picked it out of a list. And next thing I know, I'm at Clemson. I'm in an architecture class. and. Um, uh, it, it took me a while to get the hang of it and understand what was what it really dealt with and what what you had to do to be successful at it. it took took all four years of college to understand that, but um, I, I kind of found out that I really liked it and I was good at it. I thought, and so um, my wife and I moved up to Charlotte immediately out of school, and we got jobs at um, an architecture firm up there. Um, and so that was 16 years ago, and. And so I've been fortunate enough to work continuously, continuously through the, that time. Um, 
doing a wide variety of project types. I've worked in, in higher ed, doing dormitory and classroom buildings, um, military work, K-12 work, um, some, some healthcare work, um, a variety of things, different levels. Met a lot of interesting people. I've worked for the Navy, I've worked for Virginia Tech, University of Virginia, um, lots, of, lots of big money clients. Um, been able to travel a bit and um, you know it, it's, it's, it's a really kind of weird but incredible feeling to, to walk out into the street or, or go into a city and, and look at a, a, a physical building you know some, something that's been imprinted on the urban fabric and understand that you developed pieces of that from your imagination and it became a real thing that's a, that's a pretty incredible feeling so um, yeah, I, I kind of fell into it maybe somewhat accidentally, but um, it's, it's worked out. Mm -hmm. You have a very varied experience. So what would you say is your philosophy for career success? So I think a couple things are really important. I, I, think, um, I think you have to be adaptable. Um, uh, you have to be available and adaptable. Um, if somebody gives you something that you don't want to do early in your career, you do it and you do, you, you do it the best that you can and become good at it. Um, it's, important to be, it's important to be humble. It's important, I think, the further you go to understand that you can't do everything by yourself. Um, you need people that are uh, further along in their experience than you and you need people that are less experienced than you and, and you need those kind of different levels to help keep, keep the wheel turning um, of, of the industry. Um, yeah, and you get make, just make sure you, it, it's cliche, but try to pick out something that's in some way fun to do and in some way is meaningful. You know, again, you can, you want to be able to look back at your time and understand that, yes, there were, there were tough times working and long hours and it might be boring, but at the end of the day, you want to see your own personal growth and also some sort of impact, I think, on someone else or a community or, or something like that. Were there any teachers in your, your past, this could be high school, this could be college, that really impacted you? And, and why, did you, why did you feel that impact? I, I don't think there was a single teacher, but I've, I've been fortunate to um, have a very wide variety of, of teachers and that really looking back on it it, it occurred most um, prominently at the governor's school that was the first time um, you're really in a you're really in a situation where you're a teenager but you're dealing with you know you're a 16 or 17 year old dealing with high level professionals scientists uh, professors, all these people should be teaching or could be teaching at um, upper upper level universities. They all they are. Most of them have doctorates. Most of them have done important research or written books and things like that. And so um, that really just like raised the game of expectations. Um, just having that that extra layer of responsibility and professionality inserted into a super complex and, and difficult curriculum. Um, that, that was kind of the first hit in the face where I had to understand, you know, I can't, I can't just not study and pass the test. I gotta, I gotta humble myself a little bit. I gotta bear down. I gotta work with the other students who understand these things better than I do. If there's somebody that's struggling, I need to make myself available to help them. Um, if, if none of us get it, we need to go into the teacher's office down the hall and talk to them and, and, have, and spend a little extra time understanding how this works. We're going to have to stay up late and study tonight. So, um, yeah, so they, I think just as a, a, a general group of people, um, that, that crew of governor school teachers, and I think half of the ones I had from 20 years ago are still there, um, they really, I think, raised the game for, for my work ethic. Um, and it, it's really helped me moving forward. Now, in architecture, at least, I think of that as a discipline that requires the, the things that you learn in a STEM curriculum, but then also has this artistic and creative element. So if there are high school students out there that are interested in careers like that, would you have any advice for them? The, the best advice is to, um, 
expose yourself to it in a couple ways. You know, I think again, going back to the availability of videos and podcasts and, and uh, anything on the internet, you can really much more quickly nowadays as a, a younger person figure out what you want to do and and figure out what you don't want to do. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that. They did what I did. They saw that architecture word and they filled it in on the survey. And then they, three years later, they they switch majors because they realize they don't want to do this. And that's that's just a waste of their time that they can't have back. So um, it's important to um, go to career fairs, talk to everybody at the career fair to get some sort of understanding, follow up with the ones that you're interested in. Everybody needs help nowadays. There's there's a, there's certainly a. a uh, a workforce shortage and it's it's pretty pronounced in the architecture design industry right now and so um, you're not going to find very many people who aren't willing to bring in an interested teenager into their office and, and show them how things work and, and build some of that networking um, that really networking can really pay off somebody that you meet as a teenager um, you know 20 years ago that might turn into a business relationship with someone else uh, down the road when you're a full-grown adult. So um, it, it's 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 scary and it's intimidating to um, to approach people um, and ask them what do you do and how do I become part of it. But um, not a lot of people do it, and th that's the power in it. If you if you have the the strength and the confidence to start taking those steps, it can really pay off in determining. Uh, how you're going to create a life for yourself in which you do things that you actually love doing. Alex, that was great. I enjoyed uh, talking with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Alex Lee is so thoughtful. I got lost in his answers sometimes during the interview. After the interview, I did get to speak with him for a while. He mentioned that students should be open to all opportunities. That goes hand in hand with what he said during the interview about developing good networks. Well, remember, until next time, keep learning and growing. Bye-bye.